Hi, this is Burr Stewart bringing you a quick clinic on how to apply ballast to your model railroad. I'm no expert, but I'll show you what I do. Remember a few weeks ago we were doing some track laying in the delta yard and made a big bit of a mess of it? Well, since then, I've been doing some ballasting of the narrow gauge tracks because they're all bare, as you can see in this photo. The mainline standard gauge tracks are ballasted, but all of the tracks on the left need work. So we got to work with the ballast crew, and uh, first, of course, we painted the track, which we covered in some previous videos. And today I want to show you our progress, as well as just my very basic techniques for how to apply glue down and uh, remove errant pieces of ballast when you're done. As you can see here, we've gotten quite a bit of ballast on tracks that were not ballasted previously. And we did some work to oil the points and test them and get the grains out from the sliding mechanisms. That locomotive we're not going to run in this video, but someday it'll be there. But see, these three tracks in the yard all need ballast, and the main line that curves up to the left needs ballast. So let's get to work on that. We did, we did a test with some cinders ballast, some wood, woodland scenic cinders, which you see here. We decided from looking at that that it would just be perfect for a narrow gauge yard. And if you've ever been to Chama, New Mexico, and seen the Cumbres and Toltec, you know that that yard there is very dark because of all the years of cinders. Wait a minute, you don't believe me? Here's a picture of me in Chama. You wouldn't mind a little digression. Look at how dark those tracks are at the yard in, at the Cumbres and Toltec. That's the view looking eastward, and that's the view toward the west from the water tower. See how dark the tracks are? Do you want to take a minute to watch the prototype narrow gauge in operation? I know I do. We're covering fast here. That's how loud a steam is. We're just sitting. Waiting to start. Goodness, did we just watch that? Where were we? Oh yeah, we were talking about ballasting and the need to make the ballast in the narrow gauge yard a nice dark cinders color. So I hope I've got you convinced now, if not entertained, and we'll get on with it. For this project I happen to have Woodland Scenics B76 on hand, so we'll use that, even though I would prefer to use a real rock ballast like you can get from Arizona Rock and Mineral Company. So I poured the ballast into a paper cup and then used the paper cup to distribute the ballast around on top of the tracks pretty crudely. I'll speed this part of the video up so it doesn't take too long to watch it. It's a little awkward working underneath that uh, helix track there, but you do the best you can. I could have used a smaller cup, I guess. The next step is to take a stiff brush 
and just spread all the ballast and in between the ties and on the shoulders, uh, both vertical to move it around and horizontal to flatten out the shoulders. I use my fingers for some of this too, but in this shot I appear to just be using the brush mainly. At low speed you can see that this really takes a long time, especially if you're going to do it right. But I cut all that out of the video, so now we're just making one final pass of this one stretch of the three track yard. And then we'll try uh, the next step, which is tapping it with the back of the brush, which knocks all the little grains off of the rail web and the top of the ties. And I'm speeding this up too, but you can see I spent some time pulling all the grains down off the top surfaces so they're just resting in between the ties. That's what we want. I guess you could hire a woodpecker for this except it would probably just make a big mess. Now we can take a look at the overview of the three track yard. We've got the cinder ballast in there. So the next step is to glue it down. Any old cup will do, and I pour a um, 3 to 1 diluted mixture of Elmer's glue and water with a little wetting agent like dishwasher soap and an eyedropper, and we just drop it on there carefully. I could have used the larger container of glue to drop it on, and I've done that at times, but it makes larger drops, and from a higher altitude it can mess up the grains, the, the positioning of the grains. So when you get this close to the track with the eyedropper, it tends to leave the grains more in place. And uh, you may wonder why people prefer the Arizona um, Rock and Mineral Company ballast, but one of the reasons is uh, that it's actual rock, so it doesn't tend to float up, whereas the Woodland Scenics ballast is made from walnut shells, which tend to float in liquid. So you can have some control issues with this Woodland Scenics ballast that you don't have uh, with real rock. And that same is true with uh, paver sand, which is also real rock and, and works really well. Someplace one of these days, we'll, I'll show you a places where I've used paver sand. I think we did it in the inner bay um, a few videos ago, and I'm sure we'll do it again in the future. Don't be misled by how quick and easy this looks. This video you're watching is sped up eight times faster than normal. I'll slow down the video for the last segment, but even that looks like I've gotten myself amped up to doing it pretty quickly. Uh, the other point is that you really need to saturate it, as you've seen how many times I've put the glue on there. It looks like it's too much, but it never is. Well, this is coming right along, this whole area. There's only one last thing to consider, and that is that no matter how careful you drop the glue down, there's a few grains of ballast that end up on the side of the rail or on top of the ties. And what I like to do is take a, a little barbecue skewer like we use as for uncoupling picks and just work it along the edge of the rail and this, the top of the ties wherever needed to remove a grain. And this is also very tedious work, and it helps if you have uh, reading glasses or magnifying glasses of some kind to really see what you're doing. But boy, does it pay off, because if, if you've removed every single grain from the top of the tie, then you won't be 
showing a photograph of your layout later where somebody says, well, that's a model because look at all that ballast that's on top of the tie, something you almost never see in, in the real railroads, except maybe in heavily ballasted yards that are where the ballast covers the ties, but this is supposed to be an operating section, so. So this is how it looks afterwards. I'm very pleased with that. You can see we painted some of the ties to look like they were rotting out. You know, different colors of ties really helps. And then the ballast, not on the ties, and of course the rail. I didn't mention painting the side of the rail, but I did that before. That's one of the advantages of airbrushing a track when, when you start. Anyway, next time you look at one of these train videos, you can appreciate the time and effort that went into the ballasting underneath the track. And I hope you enjoyed watching this and learned something from it. And for now, this is Burr Stewart wishing you much fun with trains.